Hello World History students, welcome back to AP World History. So what I'm going to do on this video is very quickly just go through DBQ and all the rubric that's brand new, uh, just so make sure we're all on the same page. And then this week you guys get the wonderful opportunity uh, for yourselves to also practice your DBQ at least one last time. So I saw this uh, quote a little while ago and I decided I want to share it with you guys. Uh, this is by Vince Lombardi, he is a famous Hall of Fame coach in the NFL. And I think this quote pretty much summarizes what I want you guys to think about when you guys are doing these DBQs. Uh, perfect pr uh, pr practice does not make perfect, only perfect practice makes perfect. Essentially what that means when you're practicing, uh, put in the effort. Don't try to not, you know, don't just try to do the minimal effort and not really put your heart into it. Uh, because if you don't put your heart into it in practice, most likely you're not going to have the best results when the real, uh, real time actually happens. All right, so the first point uh, that I want you guys to do in your DBQ essays, which I normally want you to do first in your DBQ essays, is the contextualization. Uh, now in this module, not only are you doing the DBQ essays, but you're also doing the unit one and two review sheets, and we'll do other review sheets for the other units as we're getting closer to the AP exam. Now remember, one of the things with contextualization, you have to use specific evidence. So I would suggest you use at least two to three vocab words from the, the chart uh, when you're doing these theses or this contextualization, uh, that way you make sure you definitely hit that specific evidence. And please, please, please look at that third bullet point right there at the bottom of the slide. Please, please, please do not use any information that can be found in the documents. One of the most common errors I saw when I was grading your DVQ essays was that people would use the information found in the documents, which could be a great contextualization, but the rubric specifically says it has to be information that you cannot find from those documents. All right, the next point is the thesis, which I think you guys are all familiar with the uh, way that I've been teaching it most of the year, which is topic plus claim one plus claim, claim two, Hegel's thesis, at least to have two different, uh, two to three different sub-arguments. If you want to try to go slightly more complex with it, I'm offering you the opportunity to at least try it out. Like maybe if you have a really good counter-argument that you definitely want to refute the whole time, uh, you can say is although X, which is your counter-argument, uh, then you can do your argument with uh, your argument and the sub-arguments above uh, that back it up. By doing this, the, the idea behind it is it's adding a little more complexity to it, so that means that your reviewer will definitely you know, like you a little bit more. Uh, but more so, it helps make, helps make you think how to use documents that you, know, you want to definitely review. Like I remember one problem that a lot of people had with their quarter three uh, DBQ essays was that there was two documents that were that you're basically saying you know, factory workers were good, uh, and you know, working in the factories was definitely a positive, and child labor was awesome. Now, I think very clearly we all show, can agree that child labor is not actually great, but a lot of people in your thesis basically said child labor is great because you did the normal thesis of claim one plus claim two, just trying to group the documents together. In that case, what I would advise you guys to have done instead was do the counter argument, like I have the example here. Although factory owners tried to make their factories seem safe because the Industrial Revolution increased economic output, Industrial revolution, industrial revolution overall was negative to the average worker by forcing them to work in poor living and working conditions. So I'm using, so I basically have three sub-arguments there. One I'm going to refute, and then two that I'm going to use to support my overall thesis. And that is a little bit more complex, uh, but you know that's something that you might want to consider if you get in one of those problems. Um, the one thing I will underline here, there, just giving a little side to you guys. This essay will be 45 minutes long in total. I'll say you spend about 10 minutes probably looking over the documents, grouping the documents together, and coming up with your sub-arguments. You probably won't have time to think, you know, really flourishing thesis statements. So if you want to go complex, but you can't really think of a complex answer, you know, just do the normal thesis statement. If you have an argument, great, we move on. That's the point. You don't have to make the most, you know, the best, most brilliant thesis ever. You just have to make sure you make a thesis. All right, the next point you get is describe two documents. I'm hoping this is a give me point for you guys. Uh, do not quote the documents, use it in your own words and describe what the documents are saying accurately. And then you get one to two points uh, for using those documents to support your argument. I noticed a lot of people don't do outside evidence. And this is one thing I wanna try to get you guys to start doing, especially for the AP exam. Now you can get one point for using one outside evidence and you can get two points for using two pieces of outside evidence. Again, the review sheets that you're using, I'm hoping you can use those review sheets to also maybe give you some cool vocab terms that you can then use as evidence for this thing. 
And just like with documents, not only do you have to cite outside evidence, but then you have to use that evidence in such a way that supports your thesis overall. Now, with these sheets in front of you, hopefully that'll be an easier task. That way you don't have to think of it off the fly. You'll have sheets you know, sheets of paper right next to you when you're doing this. You can point out things like, ooh, I wanna talk about the Silk Road and the Mongols as one of my outside evidence. Great, move on. And then maybe on the second uh, uh, outside evidence, you can talk about the mandate system or something. Uh, that's what I want you to do. And these can be very quick, easy points as long as you're prepared ahead of time. This is when preparation can help you the most. All right, and the last two points you can earn is those hippo points. So you get one point for hippoing one document, you get a second point if you're able to hippo a second document. And one thing, I'm gonna put this uh, put this little sheet up for you guys on Schoology under the AP re exam review folder that you'll see. And one of the common mistakes I see with hippo and the reason why a lot of you guys don't get hippo, you might tell me the purpose of the document perfectly, uh, but on top of telling me the, the what the purpose is, you see step number four in two to three sentences, you must explain how one of those hippos, in this case purpose, helps support your argument or helps you know, build on that, or you know, gives you a better idea of you know, uh, some relevancy of that argument. So yes, the intended audience is, I don't know, the king of France. Then my second question after that, which is step four, why does the audience of the king of France matter? And that's what I think a lot of you guys are missing on there. So add two to three sentences trying to explain why it's relevant to the topic at large is the best point. And the last point, which is the 10th point, is the complexity point. And we said this is nicknamed the unicorn point, i.e. please don't go after it. As I was mentioning before, you have basically 35 minutes to write this essay and you're not gonna have time to really think about these wonderful flourishing sentences. And if you try to make the, like, you know, be super complex and just focus all your time on making complex thoughts and answers, you're probably wasting time and not getting the other points. And when, if you don't get those other points, guess what? You're probably not getting complexity. Um, the most common answers I hear from veteran teachers is try to focus on the other nine documents. And if you do the other, other nine points, and if you get the other nine points, honestly, you're probably gonna get a five on the exam in the first place. And then maybe by getting those nine points, you also get that 10th point. But please, please, please don't even bother with complexity. Just focus on that rubric and try to check off as many points as you can. All right, so at this point, uh, you should see the DBQ essay that you're doing. We want you to get that DBQ essay done by Saturday night. I'll be trying to grade it next week, and then I'll give it back to you guys as written feedback uh, before the AP exam. So at least you have one more DBQ essay before the actual exam begins. All right, guys, good luck. All right, so now what? What do you guys do? Well, the answer is attached to this assignment folder is a DBQ essay from Anti-Social Studies. I want you guys to practice doing a DBQ essay with the new rubric, which again is the same skills, just you know, different, just slightly different, you know, more uh, outside evidence and you know, different amount of documents. So you can either handwrite the uh, uh, your essay or type your essay. It's up to you. College Board will accept either or. Um, if you do handwrite the essay, I would suggest you write it in pen because you're going to have to take a picture of this thing and upload it on the internet. And trust me, from my experience, if some people, you guys are very light writers with pencils and it's, it's hard to read when you're doing those pictures. Um, I want those essays done by, and submitted onto Schoology by midnight on Saturday night, so I'll have time to actually grade it and give feedback to you before the AP exam. Now, if you recall that Vincent Party quote I showed you guys early about trying to do perfect practice, so I want you guys to try to time yourself when you're doing this, when you have, you have 45 minutes from the time you look at the documents to when you have to submit the documents. Um, it's up to you. Obviously, I don't have a timer on you, but again, perfect practice. Uh, you, when the real thing comes, you want to know how to pace yourself to be able to try to get this essay done in 45 minutes, or realistically, how much can you get done in 45 minutes? Um, after you submit it onto Schoology, uh, at the time of this recording, this hasn't happened yet, but the time you're listening to this, hopefully it has happened. On May 4th, College Board said they will release a demo website, you know, cb.org slash AP demo. And on there, you can practice logging into the AP website and submitting an essay. So on Sunday, you should be receiving, or you have, you should have received an e-ticket in your emails. Um, I don't know, you might be able to find the e-ticket also in your uh, College Board login, uh, but this is a good practice test to see if you actually get those emails and get those e-tickets. Uh, you'll get a code on that e-ticket, you go to the, the demo website, you enter in the code, and then I want you to practice uploading your essays onto it. 
So this is kind of like you know a little you know, uh, the other practice right before the real thing. So you're not trying to figure out the dynamics of that website uh, on test day. All right, guys, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Take care and have a good week.